it's stranger than we can suppose. And so the whole, the cultural fury that characterizes the 20th century, the uh, uh, tremendous upheaval and obliterating of traditional culture, the tremendous movement of information electronically around the globe, the revolutions in physics and archaeology and linguistics, all of these things are acting to complexify our world uh, to the point where it finally, I think, must be dawning on everyone that we are moving into a completely different kind of ontos of the relationship between man and nature. When one examines the Qing's, the King Wen sequence, what is immediately apparent after only a few minutes of inspection is that it is not simply 64 hexagrams in some random association, but rather that the hexagrams occur in pairs. The second term of each pair is the inversion of the previous hexagram. And there are eight cases where the natural structure of the hexagram makes its inversion ineffective in changing any of the lines. In other words, there are eight cases where inverting a hexagram affects no change. The pairs of hexagrams that are then placed into opposing positions vis-a-vis other add to sixty four. So what I believe is happening here is we are uncovering a uh, the secrets of a prehan occult school of numerological speculation. Now an obvious question would be why should the study of a 4,000 year old Chinese divinatory system yield an insight into the structure of felt experience in the here and now. The reason I believe is that this pre Chinese uh, 
psychology that was being practiced was in fact immensely sophisticated even by modern standards and that using uh, techniques which would anticipate the later development of yoga in India, perhaps using psychotropic substances. These early Chinese Taoist shamans were penetrating to the very organizational foundation of matter itself. What this is, is essentially an energy structure drawn out of a mathematical analysis of, uh, of the king when sequence. Here is the fractal pattern that is typical of the entire wave. Uh, it happens to show up at, the, at certain levels. And the notion is that throughout the wave, when it is moving downward, novelty, density of connection is increasing. So the general conclusion from these screens is that novelty is being increased and conserved as we move through time. Now, for instance, in this screen, which is further closure with today, we see uh, 562 million years virtually the entire career of higher life forms on the planet. 8,500 years on the screen. The great proto-Egyptian civilization, Sumer, Ur, Chaldea, are strung out like pearls along this plunge. Egypt culminates that ancient hierarchical uh, form of dominator society. Mycenaean pirates plunder Minoan Crete at this point. At this point, uh, here we have the Periclean Age in Athens. Here we have the Augustinian Age in Rome. Down here we have the Roman collapse. And then the oscillating around a mean in a high novelty domain that has characterized time since the fall of the Roman Empire. The Dark Ages is here. Uh, the 10th century Islam is here. Uh, the Black Death, the discovery of America, the European Enlightenment, World War II. 
Adolf Hitler becomes Chancellor of Germany. The atom bomb is dropped on Hiroshima. The summer of love is up here. Then the Reagan era stretches down through here. And the moment that we're currently living through is right down in here. This is the span of time from 
we're doing here, creating models for new technologies that allow the human mind, if not eventually the human body, to uh, explore higher dimensional space, not as an abstraction, but as the fabric of their own lives and the life of the culture 